Welcome everyone to the Linux Tech and Gaming Show. If this is the first time you found us on stream, please visit our website, linuxtechandgaming.com, and uh, check each one of us out on uh, player.me. I'm uh, player.me slash the atomic ass. Osiris? Uh, player.me forward slash Osiris is where you can find me and all the links that I have across the whole interweb, inner world. Yes. You can find all of our links there. And, Sistrum, you have a player.me, but you haven't, you haven't put any links on it. <laughs> you made me do it. I'm not. That doesn't mean I actually have to do anything with it. It's just there. <laughs> what? Maybe someday over the rainbow I might add some content there or whatever I'm supposed to do with it. I don't know. I for actually forgot. Look at this. That I even have it. It has one. What is that a link to? What does it go to? System.com. Oh. oh, okay. <laughs> which which has a clean shaven face on it. <laughs> uh oh, it changes. Pretty. Yes. Right, but if you if you go over there to the thingy and you click on the little uh little other thing <laughs> I have there, uh with the little uh cloud. Not that one, you go to this middle tab thing uh that one the, yeah that one and then you go highlight over the cloud move my face go over to the cloud thing and watch what happens content I... pops up it if you go yeah. over and highlight it it's not showing it on the screen it makes me sad anyway you can go over yeah. a little it pops up but if you select the different items in the picture it actually goes places over the web it's one of my uh practice tool things i mess with stuff yep goes to different yeah. places yeah, kind of your cool. website's broken. My website is not broken. <laughs> it's broken. It doesn't Never. work in Chrome. Uh, it works anywhere. Work in, uh, the real test is, does it work in Internet Explorer, though? And does it run Crisis? <laughs> no. <laughs> and no. No, it does not run Crisis. It's not supposed to. Aww. It's a test site for like different <laughs> development features. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's different things you can do in HTML. It's all written in HTML5, so... And it follows <laughs> HTML5 standards. And it has some bootstrap in there, too, but it's whatever. Anyway, <laughs> moving on from yes. the random stuff that I do. So my game pick of this week is Thomas Was Alone. This is a 2D platformer, a puzzle platformer, actually, featuring a multitude of different... Sh shaped and sized blocks that have different platforming capabilities and the puzzles leverage these capabilities. It's graphically simple such that even though this is built on Unity 4, it runs fantastically on every hardware that I've tried it on, uh, such as Sandy Bridge era integrated graphics it still ran at 1080p 60. And the best part about it is the narration. It has a fantastic story that's excellently narr narrated. So I, th this is one of those kind of games that I would buy even if it wasn't on sale. And it's still very affordable at just uh, $9.99. So, yeah. Uh, have either of you guys played this one? It was uh, fun, but I did yeah. not play this one. You should. I'm sorry. I got stuck. <laughs> you got stuck? <laughs> yeah, I kept dying. I didn't realize, like, I'm not really good <laughs> at these games. Like, Mario Brothers was, like, the bane of my existence when I was a kid. And what? this is, like, yeah. Yeah, I hate Mario Brothers. Like, I hate any Nintendo game. Blast like for me. You cannot say that. Yes, I can. I have the <laughs> absolute, absolute, to state that. I hated those games. Give me a game of, like, Mist or, like, Tomb Raider or something of that nature. I'm good to go, but I just don't like Mario Brothers. Like, those little button mashers that, like, you only have, like, a couple of buttons. You know what the key is, right? Every time you die, just say that the game was cheating. And then throw your controller down. You'll feel better. No. 
<laughs> anyway, yeah, the game was interesting. I um, I'm also colorblind, so I have issues. Ah, uh, yeah, I could see that being uh, a definite <laughs> issue I have, with this game. When I'm supposed to do things with a couple of blocks, and they're all the same color, but they're not. <laughs> Uh, it was a little difficult, so I got stuck. Yeah. Uh, it was the four green blocks that technically weren't all green. That, ugh, I got really annoyed. Anyway, yeah. So, yeah. so if, any, if anyone else is colorblind in the audience, um, each of the blocks is a different color, and some of the puzzles are different colors. So that might be a problem for you if you are colorblind. Just... To point that but out. if you have a sadistic sense of humor and you know somebody who is colorblind, <laughs> gift them this game. <laughs> you know, and support Steam doing the same thing. You know, support Linux and Steam and stuff by gifting this game to your friends that are colorblind and then saying, I'll give you 50 bucks if you can complete the game. Uh, damn. Because there's no way. There's two levels in the game. There's no way. There's no way a colorblind person can complete it. Anyway. It's a fun game, though. Looks interesting. I... Something yeah. Mean. So, let's see. Our first... Well, now we get into the round table, don't we? Yes, the round table is next. Uh, basically where we talk about uh, a given topic and just basically discuss it and tell our sides and our opinions on it. What we got this week? Uh, this week we have the Steam Machine launch. Which we're a little behind the times on. This happened a while ago. Like two, three weeks. But uh, A week ago, yeah. roughly. A week, two weeks, three weeks. You know, time just kind of blurs. But uh, there are currently three different Steam Machines you can buy right now. I don't know whether they're actually going to get to you in a timely manner. That's that's to be seen yet. But you can choose from the Zotac Nen, the Which Cyber, awesome. or the Alienware. And, of course, we recommend you do not buy the Alienware. Don't touch it with a 10-foot pole. We recommend that you don't even click the link. <laughs> no. don't, don't even do it to yourself. No, because yeah. the link will give you cancer. <laughs> yes, it will give you. The Zotac, though, on the other hand, is a freaking awesome machine. Yeah. Just because it is freaking awesome. Like, even if it wasn't a Steam machine, it's still freaking... Zotac has this thing. They actually, I would say, they're they're pretty good at cutting edge when it comes to microcomputers. Like, they are one of the top, in my opinion, microcomputer builders. Um, they did do a really good job. And they actually did really really good job with the steam machine like the hardware is where it needs to be with it um it's there only caveat i have on it and as much as i do not want to agree and i just i throw up a little bit in my mouth on the uh, the point of is that linus hold on hold on before you get into that because I, I i could this is gonna go shoot off into space somewhere in a minute <laughs> it's worth noting that zotac uh that's their niche they actually have a whole lineup of uh systems that are like tiny box computers, basically. Uh, so it, it was only natural for, for them to make a, make a steam machine because that's what they excel at. Well, okay, back to Linus and, and Systrom's opinions of him. <laughs> right, right. So if they really wanted to give a good take, because here's the issue. If you've seen it, it it's posted this week. This is why it's a thing. He gives a horrible, nasty review of an Alienware Steam Machine. And that, here's the thing, if you really want to get a good opinion, there's this other guy on YouTube that get that, that gets his hands on a Zotac in any in, uh, the, the Zotac one. It's freaking awesome. His review, it's the same thing. I have to agree, the OS is just not quite there. I have to agree on that. But the hardware is there. Like the hardware is exactly what it needs to be for a Steam OS machine. Here, here's a Something question I posed to you. Something that just sits on your TV and just uh, does what it's supposed to. 
Would you would would you say it would be fair that uh, Linus was uh, not diff- uh, making a difference between the software and hardware, and he was just uh, critiquing it as a package? Because I think that's what he was going for. I don't know if that's. But the problem that I have with that is, is it's it's not exactly a package. Because if it was a package, it would be an Xbox or 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 a PlayStation Four, right? Sony makes the PlayStation Four. They make the software, and they make the hardware. Okay? That's a complete package. You can judge the PlayStation 4 as a complete package. The same thing with the Xbox, any variation of Microsoft product that you want, right? But you're not going to judge the Xbox by Windows 10. Even though Microsoft makes Windows 10, you're not going to judge the Xbox until they put Windows 10 on the Xbox. Then you can judge the two pieces independently. Because they're different. I don't. I don't think uh, a casual person is going to even know. Because uh, I don't think Valve is trying to sell Linux, or they're just trying to sell the platform so they can distribute more software. Uh, so some some fifteen year old is going to say, "Hey, mommy, I want a I want a Steam machine." Uh, Sistrum said, "Get the Zotac one," <laughs> and he's going to go out and get it, and he's going to be like, what? "What? No Netflix? No." No, it, this, it, no, except that. for Netflix works. See, that's that's yeah, the thing. Netflix it does work. works. It works absolutely flawlessly. I actually had less issues on the Zotac getting Netflix to, to, to even function. It worked directly. All I did was open it up. It worked directly in the browser, already pre-supported. I didn't have to do anything extra. All I did was put in my information to log into it, and it just worked. So, that that again, it's a caveat. Given time and updates, things are going to be resolved. It's it's just like a Steam client. I mean, given time, the Steam client updates itself, it gets resolved, issues go away. Um, so you can't judge the whole gambit by one manufacturer who failed. And time and time again, it's proven they fail. And, I mean, they're a subsidiary of Dell. We'll leave it at that. Um, whereas Zotac did an amazing job, the OS isn't hundred percent where it needs to be, but at least it functions. It's better than some of these other products and it's even better than the Android products that Linus toted at the end of his review. And it was better than them when they first started. So yeah, I given... thought that was weird. Also, why do you bring up the Android shit? Like, does anybody exactly. even play that stuff besides on their phone? Well, and it's, and it's Linux also. Underneath, it's Linux. I mean, it just happens to have a Google Android over the top, but underneath it, it's still Linux. So he's literally comparing something that has had, what? It's uh, Android came out in 2010? Or, no, Android's longer than that, hasn't it? It's been 2000 and something. I don't know. Android's been around for like 10 years at least, right? But it's been used on phones and stuff for a good length of time and so they they're comparing that to something that is just now only been in development maybe two years maybe three years and they were able to come to market well uh i have my own gripes i i I don't not about linus in his review just about how valve handled this i think uh, like I'm, I'm pretty disappointed that this was a silent launch. There was no, like, no type of public announcement, no anything. Um, and then uh, there was uh, several games that were supposed to be released with the launch of the Steam Machine that didn't. I don't think any of them got released. Uh, but one, there's only one that really comes to my mind. Well, two I think. Uh, Saints Row and Rocket League. I can do without the Saints Row, but the Rocket League. I think there was a lot of people who were waiting for that game. Uh, to come out we'll talk about it later but uh there's been uh some updated news on rocket league uh for linux anyways but uh i'm kind of disappointed that there was no announcement about it there was no hey this stuff is still in development because it doesn't quite work there was just nothing there was it was just silent treatment um and then i i think when i talk to other people who are not like they don't consider themselves like hardcore gamers or gamers or People who just have Xboxes or Playstations or might play the casual PC game. I don't think Valve has um, adequately 
marketed this product. And that goes back to the silent treatment. What, what's up with the, like, what? I don't, I, don't, I don't expect there to be commercials on NBC, CBS, or anything like that. But uh, it can't be beyond them to at least explain to them, explain to the general public what their goal is. So, like, uh, what your complaint with Linus, is, it, it kind of goes to the same thing. Maybe he was expecting something else. And maybe you understand it to be something else. I think anybody can interpret this steam machine any way they want to at this point. Because it, it can mean different things to different people. Uh, an Xbox is just an Xbox. Plays Xbox games. Oh, yeah, you, you can watch movies and things. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's kind of Valve's MO. It, it's, they're, they're not really a, a hype machine. They don't really hype stuff up or talk about a lot of things. They kind of just release things and eventually they're, they become like PC game history and awesomeness. It doesn't, it doesn't uh, deter my, my slight disappointment with them, though. Uh, I, I'm pretty disappointed with this launch. Personal. No, I, I, I agree with you. I, I'm, I'm definitely disappointed with, I would say, the turnout on Steam's part. Not, not so much the, the products themselves, but, I mean, because, again, it's we've been let down time and time again when it comes to products that are supposed to be awesome, and they end up not being awesome because... Either the profit's not there, supposedly, and so the companies just don't put in the effort. But then companies that have been putting in the effort don't get the credit they deserve for the effort they put in. And, and that's the problem I deal with. That, that's the issue. Because if there was going to be a review, the review should have consisted of more than one singular product from one singular manufacturer. And then compare how they respond. That's what it should have been. You know, it shouldn't have just been, oh, well, all Steam Machines are shit because this Steam Machine is crap. I'm, yeah, I'm that's, sorry. that's true. I don't, so, I mean, I, I'm on the fence on that, kind of. Uh, I don't, I, I vaguely or uh, casually looked over some of the reviews, the written reviews and the video reviews. Uh, I think Paul's Hardware had one on the Zotec one you're talking about. <clears throat> well, and so no, well, not just Paul's Hardware. Uh, awesome Sauce Network also had a review. Okay, that's what I, I think. That's what I'm thinking of there. Yeah, I l I have a link, so there is a video set for it. So I have a link for that. So if y'all want to review it later, or whatever. Anyway, but yeah, so I mean, I I don't know. I, I personally, I have my opinions. Um, and, and again. I have my reasons for why I want it to succeed. Um, the the it just the caveat that I had is it's not fair to and and you know what life isn't fair, but it doesn't matter. The point being is is that out of the gate stating something to an audience that you have so large a large enough audience who are going to follow what you say and then you basically say well. I think this, this thing is total crap, and uh, this other thing over here is better. And the reason I think it's total crap is because only one part of it is total crap. That's not true. It's not total crap. You, you know, you just you don't know what you're talking about, and you've done many things repeatedly that show you don't know what you're talking about. And that's, you know, this uh is just my opinion. With that in mind, uh, yeah, I think you have to also bear in mind that he's not a reviewer. He is a unboxer, and he overviews things. Uh, I think there's, I think there's some good reviews of the Steam Machine out there that uh, understand where the shortcomings are in the pros about the the total package, as it were. Uh, I don't, I don't think Linus. I, I hope that people don't take Linus as serious as he completely understands every product out there that he reviews because he reviews so many products it's, it's not even humanly possible for him to understand all the products uh so i i don't you know at the end of the day i don't personally care what linus says because if valve can get this shit together uh it still has a chance uh for sure and like and like we pointed like we talked about it before uh this doesn't need to have a day one uh uh, it doesn't need to succeed on day one like, say, an Xbox or a PlayStation does because they're so, competitive, they're so competitive in the market. 
that if you fall behind at the early stages, you'll never catch up. Uh, this isn't this isn't in that in that type of context or space. Uh, so hopefully uh, Valve gets off their ass. I just want Valve to say something. Hey, hey guys, uh, yeah, we released this shit and we are working on these types of features possibly. That's all I want to hear. Like acknowledge that it even looks like they don't even acknowledge it right now. They they've got other things going. I don't know. But we'll see. We will definitely see. Indeed. Okay, so our next topic is a rumor from Fudzilla that NVIDIA is phasing out the GTX 960 2 gigabyte version. So. Yeah. What do we think about Fudzilla, this? for those who don't know, Fudzilla is what the name implies. Uh, it's a rumor mill with some FUD. You can take this. But I think this is a pretty solid uh, rumor. I don't even know why they released the 2 gig version, to be honest, uh, this yeah. year. I, I would expect uh, that if this was legit, that NVIDIA would be looking towards introducing more memory onto the higher-end cards. You know, push the whole line up. Six gigs for the 970. Maybe six yeah. gigs for the 980. And then eight for the 980 Ti. I, I, don't, I don't see the, the Titan X going up because 12 is already kind of a lot Sir. unless you're doing triple 4K gaming. Which I don't even think then at that point you can even push that much. Forget the, the running out of VRAM. Not with a single card, not really. Well, I, I think the 2 gig was a mistake in the first place. So I, I think that the 2 gig on the 960 was a mistake. Um, I, I think that basically the way I look at it is that what they should have done up front is, you know, if the 960 should have been base. Um, and so, I mean, they already got in trouble for doing like the 3.5 or whatever. They could have done 2.5, but it evened out the line, huh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're going to do that, <laughs> you might as well just, you know, even it out and, and you know, do do a half increment or something. I don't know. But three should have been a medium, <laughs> medium anyway. Shouldn't they're, they're minimum anyway. Um, so, yeah, three should have been the minimum. And three should be the minimum on any buffer right now because I just, I don't know. I mean, it's just, you know, two gigs, it, I don't know if that's enough for some people to be able to do what they're trying to do now. Like, is two gigs even enough to do 4K? I don't uh, know if you no. even want to do 4K on a 960 anyway, but that's a whole other can of worms. I don't think two gigs is enough to game on. With, uh, no, no, not a, the, well, it depends on the game. Most but, indie games probably will run it. Solidly enough, uh, I, I think if you get into games like Last Light, maybe uh, you will uh, probably have a problem there. But I, I bet you Last Light this. I have actually tested this with a 750 Ti, which had two gigs. Even turning the anti-aliasing off in um, uh, Team Fortress 2, I was kind of hitting up against that two gig limit. So at four gig or four K, I think uh, yeah, you do need more than two gigs. So yeah, so but of course you shouldn't even be playing four K on a nine sixty anyway. Uh, but that's not here nor there. Probably not. Your monitor probably shouldn't cost more than your graphics card. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true. <laughs> that is true. Uh, um, so if you're gonna be spending, I, you know, a good chunk I, of money on, I paid uh, eight eighty five for my monitor. I'm gonna get another one, and the graphics card only cost me about three hundred. What the fuck? <laughs> no, no, uh, no, 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 no. Here's the thing: the monitor should not be more expensive than the computer that is attached to. Okay, I'll rule. buy that. Right, yeah, that's my that. rule. So if you're if you're gonna buy a computer and you're gonna put a 4K display on it, your graphics card, CPU, and memory. Should should be equal to your display. I don't know if I'm there yet. If we throw in the power supply on the case and the drives, maybe. Wait, so your CPU, your memory, and your 
and your graphics card are not equal? No. The monitor cost eight eighty five. Uh, the graphics card I got for about three hundred. The because it, it was on sale, it was actually lower than three hundred. It was like two eighty. CPU okay, is but also normal retail price, not on sale. Normal retail price. Let's play the prices right here, right? Normal retail price. <laughs> well, well, we're talking about. I, I bought this video card when they were the nine eighties were already out. I've got a seven eighty, by the way. The nine eighties were already out, and these were clearing off the shelves. So they're like dropping in price. You know. What's the normal retail price when they're clearing off the shelf? Mm, okay. Oh, so it's a 7 Series. Oh, okay. Yeah. And you're running 4K. Okay. Well, at least it does it. Anyway, I guess we go back to the point of this. Yeah, rumor meal, whatever. GTX 960 needs to burn and die anyway. So, um, what's next? Well, it is a 1080p card. But uh, what's next is that uh, Asus has released a tri-band router with more antennas. So many antennas. But can it run Crisis? I I think it, I think it can. I think it can run Crisis. I mean, okay. it looks like it's got a beefy enough CPU. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 that, uh, yeah, I would, I would assume. Holy crap. <laughs> it supports A, C, N, G, and B. Um, does, does anyone does anyone have B anymore? Is that still a thing? I have no idea. Um, well, I mean, if you have G support, you're always going to have B support. Um, you know, when you got to get to that G spot, that B spot's, you know, just right behind it. So Anyway... <laughs> Um, but yeah, cause you, cause G and B are both 2.4 and I believe you can do, well, AC is five gigahertz, N is five gigahertz, but N can also be 2.4. N, uh, N can be either 2.4 or five and I believe AC uses or can use both at the same time. I don't think so. I think AC is 5 gigahertz only. Hmm. Because of the way that it's designed. I thought that was the selling point of AC was that uh, it had the ability to use both bands. And he, he has to Google it. Yeah, I'm going to have to Google it because I, uh, uh, I definitely believe that AC is a 5 gigahertz range only. Nope, you're right. Yeah, it's 2.4 and 5. Man, I thought it was 5 only. Because I know A is something, and I just... Anyway, A, I A is 5 gigahertz, but yeah, it that, was limited to 54 megabits. Yeah, and see, that's the thing, is that my understanding was is that AC is supposed to be a derivative of, of A. Um, so, I don't know. Okay. Well, I, I, haven't I really learned followed. something new, yeah. and knowledge is power. <laughs> I, uh, I, I haven't really followed wireless too much, but the impression that I get from, uh, from looking at, at the stuff that's coming in is that N was the logical pro progression from G, just giving it more bandwidth, and AC was a further progression where you could lump the bands together and get even more bandwidth. That was just my uh, my take on it. And it was all invented during World War II, but nobody actually ever wanted to use it. Anyway, <laughs> by this lady. Anyway, uh, that was an actress. 
Anyway, so what's up, Osiris? Like, what's your input on this? Uh, besides it just being like retardedly impressive on the specs, uh, it does have uh the ability to link your Ethernet, uh, two inter- Ethernet uh, ports. They're one gig a piece to make the uh, two gigabit link, and that's good for your NAS setups, your at home NAS setups and stuff like that. And but this is not for the faint of heart. This thing cost you the whopping four hundred dollars. For most people, that's a lot of money to spend on a a router. But then again, I guess if you're looking at anything with this many antennas, you probably you might want to spend that much. I don't know. It's just ugly. Let's start with that. <laughs> Where do you put this thing and it not be ugly? Oh, ceiling? I don't know. Uh, if you it's, it, Here's a comment from the, the page. If you look at it long enough, the legs start to move and a light pulses back and forth across the red line. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Knight Rider. Yes. Uh, yeah, so there you go. If you guys are looking for a router and you have four hundred dollars burning in your back pocket, this is the bee's knees, as it, as they would say. This burns the, greatest, the bee's knees. But here's the thing: the greatest thing is it might actually be able to run Crisis. What the fuck happened <laughs> to you? Did you have an earthquake? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all were talking, so I moved my camera. No, I I had to make adjustments. <laughs> he, he wanted Batman to be front and center. No. <laughs> Bat plushy. And Sylvester. <laughs> no. No, I just I made adjustments to the camera. All right. Okay, anyway. For in more hardware news, uh probably heard about this by now. Um, but Broadwell E flagship specs have leaked out. I have to say this is pretty impressive. Uh, the you i7 get two six, more cores, two more cores, four more threads, uh, making a total of ten cores and twenty threads, uh, at a clock speed of three gigs, three, three gigahertz. Um, we don't know the turbo speeds on that. Uh, Not yet. It, yeah, yeah, we don't know the turbo speeds, but it's to probably be determined. right. Yeah, that's what it's. Uh, that's what the site is saying. Uh, it's got twenty-five megabits of L3 cache, which is five more than last year, or has will really. Uh, it, the good the good thing, what I think is excellent, is that the people who just bought Haswell E not uh, recently, uh, they get to keep the, the socket. So it's LGA twenty eleven dash three. All right. Uh, yeah. Uh, just to, Intel's uh, notorious for doing that. Just so we're uh, we're clear on this, this is Broadwell E and not Skylake E, which is not out yet. Correct. Because there, I was actually confused about this uh, a while back. Like in the early part of the year, um, before any of this stuff came out, when we still had Devil's Canyon, that was the latest thing that had been out. I thought that uh, we were going to see, you know, Haswell E. Broadwell would just be a collection of mobile chips, and then we'd just run straight on into Skylake. But then when the the Skylake desktop stuff, you know, the 6700K came out, then people started talking about, oh, yeah, the the Broadwell desktop stuff also got released. Like, what? There wasn't supposed to be any Broadwell desktop stuff. What? What are you talking about? So yeah, that kind of caught me by surprise, because I didn't I didn't think it was gonna be any, because there was no talk about it. Nobody was talking about Broadwell except as, oh, it's gonna save so much power, mobile chips, raw. Yeah, I don't I don't know about that either. I thought I kind of thought the same thing. Oh. Um, Hyperthreading is still retarded. <laughs> um. Anyway, I heard that. <laughs> it's still retarded. Like, they need to just kill it already. It needs to just go away. They've gotten enough cores on die. They do not need hyper-threading. It just doesn't need to exist. It can just be gone. I mean, they're already doing it in the i5s. They've already killed hyper-threading in the i5s. No. And they're they, actually decent processors. There's actually a specific thing that they do there. On the mobile series i5s, you're going to have two cores and hyper-threading. So you have four threads out of a dual-core processor. 
So they're just basically an i3 with turbo boost is all you get. But on the desktop, the i5s don't have hyper-threading, but they do have four genuine cores. That's the way it's been since the, the Sandy Bridge era, and it's just a way to separate them from the i7 part. But hyper-threading is retarded. I'm Actually, no, no, no. It does make a significant <laughs> difference. And all the, the I, reports that I've heard of AMD Zen is that they're going to have some kind of hyper-threading themselves because it fucking works. Hyper-threading is retarded. When AMD <laughs> goes hyper-threading, I'm screwed because I hate hyper-threading. You can get a Cyrix. So, Why? It breaks so much crap. How? It mm. breaks his crap you, because he does a lot of crap. If you understood the way a kernel works, and you absolutely understand how things are processed in stacks, you would know that hyper-threading is a piece of shit, and they should have never invented it, and it should not be used, and it is a total piece of shit. But that's my opinion. I'm sorry. That's my opinion, and I'm going to be verbal about it and whatever, and I'm probably going to get... Anyway, it is my opinion. Absolutely my opinion. But it is cool that they're now doing 10 cores and supposedly 20 threads, but... It's been my uh, understanding. Uh, ge generally, you get it, well, at least in the i7, the regular i7 desktop lines. Uh, you get it, uh, what was it? Four. You got four cores and two hyper threads? Uh, uh, so. it's, it's one hyper thread per core. So you're always doubling oh, okay. your core count to get the threads. So what I've seen is it's generally, what, about 30% increase. Is that, is that a, about right? I haven't done a hard CPU test to actually test this, but there is a noticeable performance difference between having hyper-threading and not having hyper-threading. Right. Uh, I, I always thought it was about 30%. Uh, so if, I guess if you assume, without doing any like real scientific benchmarking, uh, the regular i7s have four cores and then I eight, what, total eight threads. And it's getting 30%. I would assume that this thing will be doing about 30 to 40% better. All right. It, so really, it does. Go ahead. Hyper threading was back when the Pentium 4s were out, right? So you had hyper threading on the Pentium 4s. Right. There were three generations, in, in my opinion, of cores that did not have hyper threading. And then all of a sudden, when the i series came out, now they've got hyper-threading again. Um, can you explain why didn't Intel just keep hyper-threading the entire time? I mean, what was wrong with hyper-threading? I mean, if it the... was so amazing and so wonderful, then there should have been hyper-threading in the Core 2 series. There should have been hyper-threading in the Core series. There should have been hyper-threading in the Pentium D series. There should have been hyper-threading... I mean, but they discontinued it. And they even discontinued it on the Pentium 4s. So... Well, I, I got the chance to uh, actually play with a Pentium 4 system with hyper-threading, and it was abysmal. Like, I, I got legitimately better performance turning the hyper-threading off on that particular machine. And that seems to be the... Uh, the general consensus of people who have experienced those Pentium 4 uh, machines, including people who worked in the uh, the server space, was that they just were not... A, the the hyper-threading of that era was atrocious. You, you do realize it's the same code base, right? <laughs> See, that's what people don't understand. They use the same code set. All they did is they refined it, supposedly, and they've made changes. But the deal is, is it's still hyper-threading. It still uses the same layering. It's still done the same. You still stack your threads. You know, because I understand your clock is running, and then you have this, and then this gets bored, and so you throw something else in the stack, and then something else in the stack, and then something else in the stack. But here's the downside to that. What happens if there is a corruption, and that corruption breaks your entire threaded stack? 
Then your processor has to go back to its cache. That's why there's uh, explaining how this works. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's all crap. Let's move on to the next topic. Before I <laughs> hold on, hold on. For uh, another so 30 minutes on this. Hold on. Uh, to round up the rest of the story. Um, so I don't know how many of you people actually want to add, buy that 10 core 20 thread stuff because that's $1,000. But uh, the rest of the lineup looks like this. The 6900K has uh the, the, the eight core 16 threads for six hundred dollars um the i7 6850k has six cores 12 threads for 450 dollars and then at the bottom of the heap uh you have the i7 6800k with six cores 12 threads for 390 that's actually kind of reasonable uh, it's 15 megabits of l3 cache for that one 3.4 gigahertz core clock with a boost clock of 3.6 I, that, that's a serious contender. I might look. In, I think that's worth looking at. Yeah, especially with the dropping prices on 2011 three motherboards and DDR four. You might be looking at getting out if you're conservative on your RAM. You know, 16 gigs. You know that that uh, I, that would put me out of memory pretty damn quick. And I just I don't know, look over there and see that I have enough free. <laughs> be sure because the last time we did a show I ran out of RAM oh my god yeah I, I, I've First got 8 problems. gigs I've got 8 gigs free I'm good I'm good wow for now yeah yep, there you go I ran out of I ran out of RAM with 32 gigs but uh, yeah it, you could probably get away for maybe $600 with a 6 core processor from Intel so that's not bad. Not bad. $100 a core. I'm sorry. Sorry. $100 <laughs> a core and a half. Whatever. Because <laughs> it has hyper-threading, right? Yes. Is it really six cores? So it's 12 yeah. threads total? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So a core and a half. Uh, anyway. Um, okay, so what's what's next to our talk? Okay, the next topic we have is Trine Rust. 3. Threat oh, Rust? yeah, yeah. No, no, Trine 3, you're right. Uh, something okay. happened. It just got <laughs> rearranged. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, yeah, Trine 3 is out, and it's already on, uh, already available for Linux and SteamOS. True story. Yes. Uh, if you guys remember way back when? Uh, me and Ubu and Atomic played a lot of trying. What was it first two? Yeah, trying two first. Uh, we did beat that, didn't we? Yeah. And uh, then we beat. It seems that these games were on sale when we made the dock, but. Uh... Aw, wait. Yeah, uh, wait. the bundle is no. no longer on sale. Trying one is no longer on sale, but trying two and trying three are both sixty-six percent off if you want to go grab them. That there puts trying trying three down to fifteen dollars twenty nine cents. Not bad, not horrible. And it supports a good cause, Linux. Yes. Yes. Remember, yep. if you if, if you want the uh, the sale to count as a Linux sale, you got to play it an hour or two on Linux in the first what is it two or three weeks, something like that. I think is how Valve's system works that out. Uh, wait, yeah, you have to wait. What'd you say? You have to play. You have to play the. You have to buy the game and then play it within the first week on a Linux system. Uh, I think is how it works. Within the first week, okay. Yeah, within the first week. If you don't play it at all, like let's say you buy the game and never play the game, it just gets counted as a uh, regular PC sale or AKA Windows sale. Uh, if you buy the game on a Windows machine, uh, obviously it's a Windows purchase, but if you buy the game on a Windows machine, then go play it on Linux first, that is also a Linux sale. It's kind of convoluted how they do that. I don't know why you just can't pick. <laughs> Who do you want to support? Like, you, you know what would be nice if they actually had a uh, button uh, once you buy the game, just like a Humble Bundle does. Once you buy the game, what is this for? Windows, OS X, or Linux? You pick the platform that you want to support, even if you're never going to even play it on there. That way that shows financial interest, which is way more important than people going to forums and and, and complaining about shit. But uh, yeah, that little short ramble and thought 
on that on that topic. So yeah, that's trying three. Uh, next up, we have Rust has a new in-game store, and things are popping up. Uh, you yes, you can now add throwing money at the screen in real time while being completely frustrated out of your mind because that's one group of guys. They keep finding you and killing your killing you every five minutes is going to do to you. Rust is the most frustrating game I've played, like, ever. Uh, and if you don't believe me, you can go back and look at Ubu's videos. <laughs> it used to, like, drive him to, like, near suicide. I don't know why he still played it. But anyway, so th this game now yeah, is in-game. Hey, just, just so we're clear here, he did not commit, commit suicide, and that's not why he's not here. <laughs> so, we just want to clear the air. He is still alive. I'm glad you cleared that up. That, cause that's a yeah. But uh, yeah, there's an in-game store for Rust now. Uh, for, cause I, I I don't personally like the game because of the amount of hacks and and people who are griefing other people for no reason at and all. And their Assets and the yeah, then the dangling penis uh, pr principles uh, that are going on in this game. There's that. That are uh, tied to your Steam account, so you'll always have the same size penis. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is that's actually a true story. Um, but anyways, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Wiggles in the wind. Wiggles in the wind. Anyway, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, so this is kind of just think Team Fortress Two or something like that when you when you think of this. This is an in game store in the <laughs> that, that you can buy stuff for uh, for Rust. So if Rust is your thing, uh, congratulations. You have different ways of spending your money now. On things that wiggle in the wind. Um, <laughs> that's what she said. Um, <laughs> Hard West is released. Okay, what is this thing? Yes, what is this? So Hard West, I don't know if you guys are familiar with uh, XCOM, which is pretty popular. Uh, it's a turn-based tactical strategy game. Uh, so for those who don't know exactly what that means, uh, basically, basically, uh, you take turn. Uh, e each one of your your members of your squad will take have a turn to uh, commit an act. Like, well, they can defend, shoot, do whatever. It's that type of thing. So, I know that's not for everybody, but this game has some pretty good credentials, uh, which is why I bought it up. Uh, well, I I'm gonna butcher this guy's name like completely because I don't know what the hell. Mar just check the show notes. Marchi, we're just going over this first name, Marcy, <laughs> who also did the music for Witcher 3, did the soundtrack for this game. And then a guy by the name of Harris Orkin, uh, who did the story for Company of Heroes 2, Dying Light, and Call of War, uh, is the writer for this game. So this isn't no, like, uh, out of the blue indie game. This, this game looks like it might have some, some, at least it has some muscle behind it, so it might have some potential. He has, like, a Batman last name i wanted i almost said you can't say that if you say that you 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 get the internet award um it it looks russian oh it it google detected is polish which is totally right. legit but i don't think it's polish yeah I'm, 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 I'm gonna i'm gonna stick this in the uh in the, in the chat down here for the live viewers Maybe they can take a crack it's, at it. Uh, it's uh, it's saying uh, Shubovich. Uh, it's it's uh, Bashish Bayovich. <laughs> or what? Bashish Bayovich. Yeah. For the like listeners it. who are not watching the podcast and listening, uh, I'll spell it out for you: P R Z Y B Y L O W I C Z. Yeah. That that, that looks like, that. like a funky T, actually. It's Bayovich. Bayovich. Uh, Visual Bayovich. Visual Bayovich. Visual Bayovich. Yeah, who knows? Uh, v E. It, the last part is pronounced V E E C H. Vich. So it's Vich. Vichy Bayovich. Vichy Bayovich. Ah, I can't. Ah, I can't say it all, but it's. Uh, it's. Um, but yeah, it is Polish. All right. Yeah. It's a. Um, you you can even pronounce it Shilovich. Shilovich. If you've ever heard the name 
Shilovich. That would be another way to pronounce it. Uh, S H I V. Yeah, we're spending H -H entirely too much time on the pronunciation. Shilovich. Shilovich. <laughs> yes, but we want to pronounce it correctly. <laughs> <laughs> or just tell uh, them to change your name to make it change your name to make it more pronounceable. <laughs> uh, so anyhow, for right now it's on sale for fifteen ninety nine. Uh, you can pick the game up. The regular price is nineteen ninety nine in case you missed the sale, but you never truly miss the Steam sale. The sale is on until the twenty fifth, so you got another and, week. And then it'll be the autumn sale in about three more weeks. Yeah. After that, so uh, this looks like an interesting game. I'm gonna have to look into it more. So actually, it, actually, actually, I need to uh, finish playing XCOM. But this is another. It looks like it got the same day launch. I saw. Don't quote me on that. Uh, as uh, OS X and Windows, so that's another. That's another plus one. So buy it. Buy a thing of turkey bacon and celebrate American Thanksgiving. <laughs> send, all your hate mail. send all your hate mail to at Sistrum on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyhow, moving along. Uh, that rounds out all our topics for this week. Uh, how long we? Been? Oh yeah, we're just on time. So uh, for the rapid fire topics, so we're gonna. St uh, I'll start it off. Linux games. Well, this is probably like dated because in just a day the number changes. But we're at over sixteen hundred games now. After three years, three years after the release of Steam on Linux. Yeah, uh, but if you want to go to itch.io, thirty six hundred and three. What the hell is that? Itch.io. Yeah. Uh, and for the listeners, it's itch.io. Yes. You can find all kinds of Linux games. Go on there. Click platform. Platform. Platform Linux, and you get 3,603 results. Yesterday it was 3,600 even. What? So, where, 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 where are they aggregating these games from? Just, there's all kinds of different simulators. Let, let's see. I know, I know that Succulent is in here. Somewhere. Oh, it's this website again. Yeah, yes. this shit. <laughs> yeah, that that <laughs> website. Uh, um, <clears throat> yeah, that that uh, that website. You know, hosted in the uh, country of Palestine. You know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know. I just didn't put that in there. But yeah. So. I wouldn't it, doubt it. <laughs> Palestine's not a country. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> Uh, what's our next part? So, um, yeah, so, okay, so they we're like 3,600. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I yes. wouldn't say 3,600. That's what it's, it, this website says, and I, and I, and I must forewarn anybody who goes to that website, uh, some of that stuff might be not safe for work. Yeah. Or not safe for or human home. consumption. Hey, just. Or children, just, or, you know, hide your wife. Go hide type. Your kids. <laughs> Go type in the search bar, succulent. Play in your closet if you want, whatever. And just watch the GIF, and that's the kind of games you get on Itch.io. Yeah. <laughs> you know, for after... the record, I'm not recommending that you do that at all. <laughs> yeah. That's why I made the Palestine reference. Anyway, let's go back to the next thing. All right, what do we got okay. next, Tom? Uh, where is it? Uh... Something about .NET and ASP, or after no, the very no. silent release? No, the, the other one. Uh, after the very... Yeah, it says, After the very silent release of Steam Machines last week and the very obvious absence of Rocket League, a developer on the Steam forums has ensured the public that the game is still actively being worked on. Yeah. There it is. Yeah, so... Like I said earlier and all the way at the beginning of the show, no real type of uh, press release, no real type of announcement. Just at least, he, at least, at least on the Steam forums, you can tell that this is uh, a developer of some sort because you know you get the nice little shiny orange uh, font for your name in the Steam forums if you are. So 
Somebody from their development team said that they're working on it. I guess that news is better than no news. Still mad, though. Well, you know, it's kind of like the elusive, uh, what, uh, Fallout 3? Oh, wait, no, that already happened. Fallout 4, nope, that already happened, too. Man, when is Valve going to give us... You are behind the times. Half-Life 3. I was going to go with something here. Give me a sec. (laughs) Um, Half-Life. Half-Life is where I'm trying to go with that. But it didn't happen. Just like Half Life Three hasn't happened. Um, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, sister. What we got in, uh, about some nets? Some stuff about nets. Well, it's .dot net. I mean, I mean, Microsoft is definitely trying to take over Linux, um, and they're doing everything they can. First, they brokered a deal with um, Red Hat. And and now they got this .NET stuff and ASP. <laughs> like, seriously, why? 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 Why would you want to develop .NET and .ASP on Linux? For, for the people who don't know, because a lot of people probably may not know what uh, .NET is, what, what's the quick uh, description of what .NET is and does? Well, .NET is a horrible framework that uh, Microsoft pushes on a lot of people that use Microsoft products. Um that should have died a long time ago, but Microsoft is like, no, I'm going to keep it alive um, because we're idiots. But anyway, um, basically what it is, okay, hmm, easy way to think about it. Uh, It's a development platform to allow for direct calls to Microsoft. Stuff. Like so, so you can use .NET with. Um, it's kind of like PHP, and it, it just it it does a lot of software layered. So to sum it up, it is a it is a is a it's an easy way for people to learn code without learning the fu- fundamental code. So it allows you to tap in and say like what C. C sharp, C plus, C sharp. I guess because it's Microsoft. No, <laughs> that's not anywhere close to it. Um, okay, .NET is a is a, is a model development for like network stuff. Like if you were gonna build an application. Oh, I'm Microsoft thinking of Visual server, Basic. Yeah, yeah. So .NET <laughs> is something. So .NET would compete with PHP um, on a Microsoft product. So if you were going to build something, you would build it in ASP and .NET, and it's a framework that they use to build web applications um, using Microsoft products. Uh, the fact that it's now going to be running, able to be run on Linux, I, I think it's mostly for Azure support. Okay, so here's the thing. Most people don't understand that the largest product that Azure, which is this item, this cloud platform that Microsoft has, the largest product deployed on Azure is Ubuntu. It's freaking Linux. It's Ubuntu is the largest deployment, right? So Microsoft and Red Hat have brokered a deal to give higher level support for Linux in the Red Hat space to work higher and more integrated, tightly integrated with Azure. .NET, they open sourced, okay, so you've got the open source product, the, the web product that they they, they released. Uh, you've got the open source .NET, the open source ASP. And then they also have, they released something a, a while ago, they released their their code. Uh, their, their, basically their application, their development application uh, that you can use on on Linux basically to compete with like products like Atom, um, but they have their own development suite that you could use for Windows, uh, which was Visual ba- uh, which was Visual Studios. They actually released something for Linux to use on uh, on your on your system that you could do called Visual Studio Code. Um, And basically, you can do development in .NET and and a few other things. I don't know what in the world (laughs) 
What is with this random Bioshock stuff? <laughs> you said Adam. No, Adam is a... <laughs> uh, anyways. Anyway, Adam... Oh, okay, we'll get off the base of here, but... It... <laughs> you threw me off, you freaking tonic. Anyway, so back to what we were talking about with the .NET and native things. Uh, it's horrible, it's the worst idea ever, and we shouldn't do it. Man, I sound like I am the most pessimistic person on earth right now. I'm saying hyperthreading is horrible. I'm saying that people like Linus Tech Tips are stupid. I'm saying ASP is stupid. Man, I am a pessimistic brat. Call me, Linus. Well, don't call us. I will. I will say call that me. Linus has some some issues with his review. Um, some that he's like the would... ASP. He's like ASP and .NET of everything. Yeah. It, anyway, if anybody out there understands the joke, if anybody yeah, care, if anybody gets that joke, then uh, yeah. Send your hate mail to at Sistrom on Twitter. Oh, uh, no, no, <laughs> no, no! Don't send hate mail. Send me cookies. Um, hate cookies. Yes, with lots of almonds. Um, we, and there's like a those... joke in that too, guys. There's a joke in that too. Um, you want those bitter almonds? No, that, never mind. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I will say that there's some issues with uh, Linus's review of the steam machines, but Systrom is just an idiot because he doesn't like hyper-threading. And <laughs> I, I'll agree with him that .NET is just horrible. It, it, yeah, it just makes my games install slower on Windows, which I haven't I've done I've never understood while. why do you have to install .NET with every fucking game that you install. What is this shit? I don't understand. Well, I don't get it. It's the DirectX problem because every game has to be bundled with its own specific version of DirectX and .NET is the exact same fucking way. There's so many different subversions of it and whatever you coded your game against, that's what it, what it has to install. Uh, that being said, uh, that, Blind That's like using Vi as your text editor. I mean, it's just the same thing. No, it is not. Vi Master. <laughs> Nano, nano, so much better than Vi. Anyway, Fuck your nano. <laughs> oh <laughs> god. Screw your Vi. Anyways, um. <laughs> <laughs> let's 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 let's, yeah, but, let's round it uh, out. Uh, I mean, what do you got for us? <laughs> uh, blind Run Gaming in uh, the chat said about .NET. It allows multiple languages. It's a software environment for database connections. Uh, and and Osiris, you may be thinking C plus. Plus plus for Visual Studio. Yeah, Visual Studio. That's yeah. exactly what I was talking about. Thank you, Blind. Uh, that's that's what I was talking about uh, when I was talking about uh, being able doing short code to be able to use a lower level language. But yeah, C plus plus is not a lower level language. <laughs> it's uh, not. C plus plus isn't a lower lang uh, level language. It's um, a mid level language. Yeah. So, so it's like, like Python is a, a is a, is one that's an upper la language, and then you have C plus plus, it'd be like a mid level language, and then something like Lisp would be like a low level, or or Fortran or, or Cobol. Yeah, one of those would be like a low level code. Anything that you can translate directly into punch cards is a low level language. Um, but yeah, C plus plus is not C as a Native would be classified as a low level language, but it's still it still has its um, caveats. Anyway. So is that all the bullshit we got to spout this week? No, I got much more, but we can we can wrap it up now. Okay. So that's all we've got for today. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed the show. Uh, don't forget to visit our website, linuxtechandgaming.com, where you can view our past shows, uh, tutorials, and game reviews. And if you click on the About tab, you can find links to our Twitter, Google+, the different sites we stream to. And eventually we'll have one for our Steam group, which uh, acts as our official forum 
Oh, did I forget that? Yeah, you forgot <laughs> that. Oh, it happens. Yeah. But, yeah, there we go. So, see y'all. Oh. Not, not, probably not next week, but. Ah, uh, uh, see, that's what I wanted to touch on before you get out of here. Because, uh, Gaston was talking about is this going to be more regular again? Uh, we, we don't, we don't know. Uh, unless Atomic and Systrom have some re- revelations or information that I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I think it, we're going with the bi-weekly for now. Yeah, I, I think we've skipped two weeks in a row. So we're... Well, you know, sometimes you gotta go... I had to go take care of zombies. So, you know, <laughs> you know, you go from that. And, you you know, and, and I've, I've got to go sort through that hate mail. It takes me two weeks to get through all the hate mail. So, um, <laughs> what's what's with the what's with the head? Okay, uh, uh wait, no, I need to I was go. Trying this to reach way. Out, I was trying to reach out. and touch you. It's all right. <laughs> Keep He's on. too far away. I couldn't go <laughs> through atomic. <laughs> anyway, uh, but yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm I'm totally up. That's whatever we do. Is what we do. You guys just let me know. Yeah. And uh, I'll just spout out my weird uh, random stuff, and and uh, and and just wait and see what the other podcast says. <laughs> I uh, wonder. I wonder how much material I gave them this week. <laughs> oh, they they will use everything. You, you you can just you can be factually right on everything, but they'll find something. They'll they'll just they'll, they'll find something. They'll make fun okay. of your beard. Okay, here's the thing, guys. I may only be right about twenty percent of the time, but I'm gonna ramble like I'm in, like I actually know what I'm talking about on things. Even though I probably do know what I'm talking about, so it doesn't really matter. But the point being is it's funny. That that's the point. It's funny. Is it supposed to be a hundred percent accurate? I don't know. They're the ones that are supposed to check all of my details. I-, I leave it up to them. If I'm not right, oh well. It's a beard. Doesn't mean I know everything. So, you know, so getting mad at me because I'm not saying everything that might... You know what? So what? <laughs> it's the internet. Have you no, ever read no. things in Wikipedia and then went, oh crap, that's not true? Wait, Wikipedia is not correct on everything? Oh my gosh, really? It's the internet. Uh, That's like going to 4chan and asking how to... Never mind. I think I'm going to go to Wikipedia and ask Wikipedia <laughs> if it's correct. That's like asking Reddit how to change a diaper. Oh, God. You might get 50 answers, and none of them might be correct. All well, right. we had well, a good show until 4chan was mentioned. Yes. <laughs> See you all I later. Think, I th- all right, we're out of here.